Welcome to another edition of Inside Campbell Sports coming to you from inside a beautiful Gore Arena. Later on in the show, we'll talk a little men's and women's tennis as uh, spring sports heat up. But first, uh, to my right is head men's basketball coach for Campbell University, Robbie Lang. And coach, your team has put themselves in a wonderful position here as March Madness is about to be upon us. They've won three of their last four conference games. That puts them in second place in the conference at 11-5. and five. And the good news is, Coach, you go on the road, you, you play at High Point, you play at Liberty, but right now you don't have to worry about any scoreboard watch. And if they win out, win these two games, they get that second seed in the conference well, tournament. Well, yeah, that's the, that's the best scenario. Take care of your own business. But we're in pretty good shape if, if, we, if we don't win out um, and maybe split. We have a chance to still finish. Uh, with some help from someone else in the second spot. And uh, we, we're in position with tiebreakers, uh, should we have ties with Coastal Carolina and Charleston Southern to, to still finish in second place. But I like your first option better. Let's win out. This is a conference tournament that it's already decided with UNC Asheville wrapping up the regular season conference tournament. It will be uh, up in the mountains, at least the quarterfinals and semis will be at UNC Asheville. But, Coach, there's a lot to play for. Getting that second seed means a lot, including playing a team in the first round that would have had to basically play a play-in game to get there. Well, that's exactly right. and Maybe fatigue works into the picture, and, uh, and you could benefit from that. Uh, so... That, that, that's a good thing, and you want to you want to improve your resume for all postseason tournaments. Uh, if we finish really strong, then possibly the NIT picks you up because uh, if NCA wins out, then they're sitting there in the NCAA picture, and because the NIT will often take one team out of your league, then maybe we're the next choice, and then there are other tournaments as well. Now, ultimately, what we want to do is win out, go all the way to the NCAA tournament. But we want the resume to be as good as it possibly can because, you know, the other eight teams in the tournament uh, after the play-in games have scholarship players, and they want to win too. So it's not going to be given to us. Coach, if you had to point out a couple of things, what does your team need to do or, or fine-tune to make a run to the NCAA tournament? Well, we've been talking about tournament caliber basketball, and we've been trying to play tournament basketball in the month of, of, of February uh, heading into March. And it, it means that every possession is as valuable as gold, that you have to maximize your possessions, not turn the ball over, be efficient, and get good looks every time down the court. And uh, I'm, I'm still – our defense has improved, but some nights we're, we're not where I want to be, so – if you have a choice of playing offense or defense, let's keep it a little bit longer offensively and let our offense be a part of our defense. And then, uh, obviously, rebounding and defense along with shot selection, that's tournament basketball. And uh, it, you just got to understand that each night you're playing 10 four-minute games, and I'm referring to the media timeouts that come out right after 16, 12, 8, and 4 in each half. And you got to... You know, look at the big picture. Let's just divide it into small increments and play efficient basketball for short periods of time, hoping it will accumulate in the desired result. Coach, it was an interesting week last week. Uh, you had nine uh, days uh, between games, which uh, usually doesn't happen. But something even more interesting happened within that nine days. ESPN was uh, here on campus to do a right. feature story on, on your program and, and Eric Griffin. Um, Eric Griffin is in a couple of different uh, dunk contests right now, if you will. ESPN was here because he is one of the eight dunks that's up for dunks of the year. Uh, they're going to use that feature in a show that comes up in March. But, but that had to be a, a neat moment for your program, having ESPN here. Well, it was a lot of fun, and uh, this is the first year I've been the dunk coach, and I think we've reaped the dividends <laughs> <Yeah>. from that. <laughs> no, I As we see the first <laughs> half hour of every practice, right, you, you just throwing lobs to your guys. <laughs> That's right. But, uh, no, the, 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 the assistant coaches for their recruiting deserve that, and, and it's not only been Eric but, but Darren and Marvell that have put on quite a show for our fans this year. But, yeah, what a special event to have ESPN, and they stayed a whole afternoon in here. And, uh, you know, it, it was just fun as a coach to see uh, the gleam in Eric's eye and the other players on, on his team uh, to be a part of that. 
and it's good to have Campbell University on a, on a national market, and it's just fun. And we've worked so hard for so long to get in this position um, that it's it's very pleasing to me to know that I had some small contribution to that. And and isn't fantastic as you said right there. All the credit goes to to, to Eric Griffin, and it's his performance up there that is that is bringing all this hype. But coach, his story kind of gets more amazing as as the chapters are written a, a, a guy that didn't play in in one place for more than two years and now you're looking at potentially first team uh, all big south conference heck maybe even player of the year um, he's got the CSPN stuff going and and then on top of that he's got a good chance a very good chance to play professionally and and it's all kind of amazing from where he came from and where he was when he came to your program yeah he will play professionally i don't know at what level initially but as they say, when they evaluate these, these kids, he has a high ceiling or a great upside uh, athletic ability. He's an infant as far as basketball knowledge goes. Uh, like you said, he never had the same coach two years in a row until this year with us. And uh, he's getting more and more comfortable. Uh, he's settling down and he's starting to understand and have some things come. Oh, as my old motor, motor learning coach told me, below the cortex level, things are coming naturally to him. And uh, that's, that's good to see, and I hope he's got a lot more basketball ahead of him in the black and orange so we can see that you know, over and over again. I think something also worth pointing out is uh, he's in these two different dunk contests, which, by the way, you can continue voting for him. He's right now in the final four of the Dark Horse Dunker of the Year contest, and that could get him uh, to New Orleans to, to, to the college slam dunk contest. But the interesting thing is, again, it's, it's his dunks, but the Campbell Nation is really coming behind. Both of these contests are, are voting contests on, on Facebook and different websites, and, and people have been voting for him all over the world, and, and it's amazing where you see people with Campbell ties to support. Yeah, it really is. I mean, everywhere we've shown up this year, we've had at least some people at our games. I mean, we're at Northwestern State in Louisiana, and I bet we had 30 or 40 people. Yeah. It just blew me away. But um, what Eric's done uh, for, his, for, for his own recognition and for us it's just been fabulous. I, I you know, I can't, I, I can't find the words to, to tell you how gratifying it is uh, to see him have the success that he's had. And, and like I said earlier, it, it's something if he'll just continue to grow, uh, you know, we can see a little bit more of it. And it will be uh, fun to watch uh, how his career uh, winds up over the next couple of weeks. Remember, uh, last two games on the road this week. The next week is uh, the conference tournament. We'll, of course, bring uh, Coach Robbie Lang back to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, women still are uh, two full weeks away from their conference tournament, but uh, Wanda Watkins' squad has won three straight games. Catch live streaming of Campbell University athletic events on the internet. Log on to GoCamels.com, click on the Big South Network, and choose the event you'd like to see. And go Camels! Welcome back to Inside Campbell Sports. Joining me now is a head men's and women's tennis coach here at Campbell University since 1998. David Johnson joining me now. And Coach, first off, the uh, spring tennis season already underway. Give us a little bit of a, a preview or what you have seen so far from both your squads. Uh, we're underway with both teams, as you've referenced, and uh, I would emphasize the word spring. We have had, for us, certainly far more so this time of the year, much better weather than would normally be the case. So we've, I think, enjoyed that and prospered from it. Uh, I think the men right now are 3-2. and two. Uh, The ladies are 4-2. and two. We had our first conference match this past week. Uh, even with the good weather, we still have a couple of key injuries that we're trying to overcome. But uh, so far, so good. I'm pleased with where we are and, and what lies ahead. You mentioned that already a conference match underway. Of course, uh, everything uh, on campus athletic-wise going to the Big South Conference for the most part. What does that mean to your program and, and in conference play being in the Big South? I think for, for me, having been here, as you referenced, for some time now, uh, it We've, over the years, uh, for geographical purposes, in terms of non-conference matches, been playing a lot of the Big South schools, so there is already that element of familiarity, but, but to now be in the conference, uh, I think, as has been the case perhaps already in some of the other sports, it does create and generate more rivalries because of geographics, uh, more familiarity with common opponents. 
uh, and, and, and certainly a heightened sense of, of, of a new era in Campbell Athletics. Uh, certainly for us with regards to tennis, uh, the league is uh, strong on both sides. Uh, so we're, we're looking forward to our first year and seeing uh, how we can uh, fit alongside everybody and, and go from there. Speaking of being strong, uh, you have some very good players on, uh, on both these teams. Maybe for some that, that don't know, if they come out and see your men or women play, who are kind of the major players they're going to see out there? Well, right now, our, our top two players for each of the two teams, uh, for the men, we have Fernando Guillon. Fernando's a, a sophomore. Uh, he was freshman of the year last year in the A-Sun. Uh, off to a great start. He's 4-1 and one already. Uh, for the ladies, Carolina Chernea, who likewise was also freshman of the year last year for the women in the Atlantic Sun. So they're both sophomores, obviously, and she plays number one for the ladies. Those would be two keys. For the men, we have uh, freshman Adrian Rossignon, who's from France, who uh, I think earlier in the year beat the number 47th ranked player in the nation from VCU. Uh, he's going to be a key element for the men. Uh, for the ladies, we have a new player, Tamara Stanich and Natasha Afridi, who will both uh, factor in heavily to their success. So those are a couple of names right off the top. Your uh, pronunciations are, are so good, and, and let me tell you something, the only thing I don't like about covering your teams is it's a nightmare to try to pronounce it, and, and that's something that, that, that I love about your teams, too. Uh, so unique as you uh, have players on, on both the men's and women's squad, literally from, from, from all around the world. Uh, how do you get your recruiting uh, reach to, to, to literally go around the globe, and, and I guess just talk about getting in and, and attracting players from all around the world here to Bowie's Creek? Well, certainly more so now in this day and age of, of Internet and, and such, uh, it has made the world a lot smaller in that regard. And, uh, and yet, uh, for me, uh, formally or informally, it's, it's networking, uh, current players, former players, uh, uh, references, recommendations. A lot of what I deal with has to do with, with videos, rankings, results, and, and those type things. And... Uh, so there's a combination of things involved, and, and we do and have had uh, a wide array of, of players from different various countries. That in and of itself has helped, too, because if you are reaching out to someone, they're a little less likely to feel as apprehensive just for the fact that if they do or if they were to come here, there are already here players that perhaps will experience or have already experienced some of the things, that same things they will, and I think that in and of itself uh, helps as well. It's got to be interesting too, uh, not only for you, but, but but for the other players. There's a lot of different cultures that are kind of thrown into the uh, melting pot that is your tennis courts. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and as I said, uh, I, I think that does lend itself to uh, to, to, to making the, the recruitment process and, and even the assimilation process uh, a little easier. I, I, I jokingly say to a lot of the players, but I say it with some seriousness as well. I tell them if they like, uh, I think bright lights, big cities, and lots of noise, this may not be their first <laughs> choice. But if their desire is of an academic nature, and if it is also to compete and play at a high level of Division One athletics, then, then we've got a lot to offer. And many do find the the informality of the, the the setting or the atmosphere we have here as being one that's easier to adapt to. I think as compared to some of the the bigger universities where, in effect, you become kind of a number, perhaps. He is Coach uh, David Johnson, and, of course, uh, you will have a chance all spring to see his men and women, the women with the big uh, non-conference match against ECU uh, coming up on this Wednesday. Also uh, coming up uh, this weekend here at Bowie's Creek, baseball will be at home against Fordham. Uh, golf uh, starting out west, and uh, softball starts a week-long road trip. You can get all this information, all the schedules, and more at GoCamels.com. You can also see this show every week on GoCamels.com. We hope you come back next week to view Inside Campbell Sports.